Hey guys, OJ Albani here. Bring you guys our BBR Season 4 Week 5 battle against Magnitude and his Milwaukee Sauce box. Now, if you don't know, I don't know how, but uh, Magnitude is actually the creator of Draft League. So uh, really, really cool to be able to go up against the creator of the format. We played him last season. We had a really, really good game where we won a narrow 1-0 victory in the back of a Reuniclus Trick Room uh, sweep, which was awesome. I'm hoping we can grab another dub this week. Uh, we really do need it. We kind of got uh, tossed around a little bit last week by Kyle and that damn weakness policy Arctivish. So I'm really looking for a bounce back week. Um, but we definitely have a tough opponent to do so. Uh, but I do think we have the team to potentially do it. But before I jump into the team builder, I do want to mention only a good 40 to 50% of you guys that are watching the videos each and every time they go up are actually subbed to the channel. So if you want to do me a massive favor, hit that sub button. We're pushing towards 500. I really, really appreciate your support. It's really easy and you can always change your mind later if you end up not enjoying the content, but I think you will. Um, but yeah, with that being said, let's go ahead and do a team builder. There will be a timestamp earlier in the video or right now on the screen as well as stuff in the description letting you know when the battle starts if you want to jump ahead to that. But I'm going to go over what I brought and why I brought just so you have that background knowledge going into the match. But our team, if you did forget, is right at the top of the screen. It consists of Celestila, Latias, Cinderace, and Crocodile. Lantern, Licky Licky, Crustle, Driftblim, Garboder, Shenotic, and Throw. While our opponent's team is at the bottom, and it consists of Darmanitan, Galar, Dracovish, Rabombi, uh, Rosedrake, I almost said Rabombi twice, Copperaja, Zorak, Hitmontop, on top, Playdol, Manectric, Audino, and Torcat. Now, very, very top heavy team. Um, if you guys don't know, we had a very, very strict and brutal budget in uh, the BBR this season, and Steve elected to pick up Darm and Dracovish, both being 200 points. Maybe a little bit expensive for the Vish, but that's just my personal opinion. Uh, but definitely spent a lot of points there, but those Pokemon are very, very scary because they can overwhelm each other's checks very well in the sense that if I'm bringing my bulky water to check Dracovish or Darm, and they click Fish's Ren once, or they click U-turn a couple times, get me to force and take rocks, then it leaves me wide open for the other one. And, um, when I have a little bit more of a slower, more bulky team, I tend to get overwhelmed by wall breakers like this if I don't play very offensively. So I do have a little bit more of an offensive team than we typically brought this season. We brought a pretty offensive team last week, but prior to that first three games, definitely brought a little bit more of a balanced approach. Uh, this week, again, we are going with pretty defense, um, offensive approach, but I think it's my best way to win. We do have pivots, obviously, and you know, solid defensive backbone, but it's gonna definitely be tough. We're gonna to have to make sure that we maintain momentum at all times and uh, hopefully don't get put on the back foot with those two strong, strong wall breakers. So our first member on the team is going to be our Celestila, rocking out the leftovers, Beast Boost as its ability, Flash Cannon, Lead Seed, Protect, and Air Slash, 244 HP, 180 Defense, and 76 Speed with a bold nature. Now EVs wise, we have enough speed for our no speed hit on top. I've noticed he doesn't really like to run creeps on a lot of his hit on top spreads throughout the season. Uh, and then we have max defense. This is so that we can take two darn flare blitzes most of the time. And so that we can take, you know, like a stray fish's render. We can take heat crashers from copper or better. I felt that we were better just being max physically defensive as much as I, um, or, you know, almost max fish death. As much as I hate, you know, going like, you know, max HP, a little bit of speed, rest and bulk, you know, really simple spreads. I felt like it was most effective this week. Um, and if you look at my opponent's team, once we get a defense boost, it's really, really difficult for him to break with leech push protect and then stabs hitting literally everything minus Kaparaja with which with the defense boost we take on incredibly easy with leech seed plus protect and stuff like that. And having, you know, pretty meh bulk on the spedest side if it's not assault vest, uh, we're actually in a pretty good spot with Selly here. It gives us a great Rebombi check. Like I said, it gives us that Darm check. And gives us a good Hitmon top check. A bunch of different Pokemon on this team that we switch in. A, a really good Rosary check, uh, which is also really, really nice. So that is going to be our Celesteela. Next up, we have our Cinderace rocking out with the Choice Scarf. Blaze as its ability. Fireball, U-Turn, High Jump Kick, and Court Change. 28 HP, Max Attack, 76 Defense, 4 Speed and 148 Speed with a Jolly Nature. Now, EVs wise, we have enough speed for our max speed Zoroark, we have max attack, and then we are not too weak KO'd by plus one modest Rabombi if it does end up being Quiver Dance. We have a backup check to that outside of Cell Steel, which has a lot of pressure on this game. And then we threw the rest into defense um, just to take potential like Sucker Punches and Mock Punches and stuff like that. A little bit better. This Pokemon is phenomenal in this game. Uh, Magnitude or Steve's uh, 
Bulky Water is Dragonfish, which again isn't the best bulky water, especially if you're going to be using it in an offensive manner. Plus, it doesn't want to take U turns, definitely chunks it. So, I think an endgame with Pyro Ball is very, very likely. It gives me a Scarfer that's faster than Darm, which I find very, very important. It gives me a way to always control the speed. Um, we have Court Change just in case webs go up and we don't have a way to remove those and we need something to get rid of those, though I don't anticipate webs being all too much of an issue. It really is only an issue for Cinderace, making us not, you know. Uh, scarf, uh, you know, not fashion stuff like Darm, plus one, not fashion scarf fish and stuff like that. But honestly, that's fine. We have high jump kick just to hit things like uh, the Audino super effectively if we do need to. Though I don't really anticipate us clicking anything besides high jump. I mean, a uh, power ball most of this game. And honestly, that's uh, genuinely uh, phenomenal. So this is a really good pivot, um, really good wall breaker this game, and forced a lot of switches and a potential really good cleaner in the end game if we can find the opportunity to chip down that Draco fish. Next up, we have our Lantern, rocking out with the leftovers, Water Absorb as its ability, Scald, Volt Switch, Toxic, and Protect, 156 HP, Max Defense, and 100 Speed with a bold nature. Now, this is going to be our wrist check. Um, this is going to be a semi darm check with Protect. We can always scout and see just exactly what that thing wants to lock into because I don't expect Zen mode to speak personally. Uh, it gives us a decent copper roger check if that thing does not have power whip. The power whip will kind of blow us ass backwards. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's mainly here to check that fish. EVs wise, we are creeping no speed fish and Claydol by a few points just in case. It was more so for a no speed Claydol, but if he ends up running a really bulky Dragovish for some reason, it will cover that as well. Uh, and then we have max physically defensive uh, bulk investment just because we have a pretty fat HP stat. So it's more easy efficient to max out our defense and then throw the rest into HP. And there isn't really a lot of special hits that I'm super worried about taking in this matchup, to be completely honest. I don't expect Manetric too much. Um, and Rabombi, I can already chew hits from pretty well naturally. Plus I have Sunrace plus Celesteela. And then Rotary is going to beat us regardless. So I want to potentially be careful around that. And uh, yeah, that's going to be Lantern. Main Vish check. We're not too KO'd by Earthquake most of the time, especially after lefties, unless it's like Choice Band. And Choice Band is going to be very, very difficult for him to lock into a move against me, in my personal opinion. Next up, we have our throw making its debut. We have Leftovers as our item, Inner Focus as our ability. Uh, circle throw, bulk up, rest, and sleep talk. EVs wise, we got 108 HP, max defense, 100 speed def, and 44 speed with a careful, almost a calm, careful nature. Now, this Pokemon is honestly probably one of our main two win cons. Our second win con is actually going to be right after this. Uh, but this Pokemon does really well this week, and I feel like this might be the only week I really can justify bringing throw. Uh, Again, I haven't really looked at my schedule and um, building with it. I was actually pleasantly surprised at how bulky this thing is. But if you look at um, Steve's team, he does not have a, uh, a ghost type. He has no fighting immunity. And his fighting resistances are very flimsy at best. Roserade, I have phenomenal checks for, and it takes a chunk switch when we start boost boosting up. And if it's not a boosting item, we can actually set up all over it. Uh, if it's not getting like Dazzling Gleam or anything like that. And then Rabombi with Rocks plus Celesteela and Cinderace and things like that, it's not going to be around a long time, I, at least in my personal opinion. Personally, I don't expect Rabombi to come either, but if it does, we have ways around it. And everything else, once I start boosting up, this Pokemon's almost impossible for my opponent to deal with, provided we get good sleep talk turns and things like that. Um, EVs wise, we are creeping a. We're creeping. We're creeping Audino, I believe. We live an adamant banded Vish hit after rocks when we are at plus one defense. And then we threw the rest in spit after just to chew the special hits a little bit better. Next up, we have that second win con I was talking about, or a potential great breaker in this game, in our Latias. Rocking out the weakness policy, Levitate has its ability, Dragon Ball's Mystical Fire, Calm Mind, and Agility. 92 HP, 4 defense, 188 special attack, 4 speed def, and 220 speed with a timid nature. Yes, we are rocking out with a weakness policy, Latias again. This time, a much, much more offensive spread. Uh, and this Pokemon, I'm very, very excited about. If you look at my opponent's team, you look at Dragon, plus fire coverage, it hits everything neutrally or super effectively. My opponent's dark type is Zoroark, which does not appreciate a Dragon Pulse at all. Uh, and then Mystical Fire is going to blow past things like Copper Roger if it's not uh, Aqua Berry or Assault Vest when we do get up to uh, plus three, like Pocker, Procker Weakness Policy and get a Calm Mind up. If we can get an Agility off, that's also phenomenal because that means that we'll also get things like Scarfed Arm and Vish and uh, Rabombi and a bunch of different things like that, which is awesome. Uh, and yeah, this is either a phenomenal breaker in pushing through this team and doing a lot of damage or it's a potential great win con if we can chip down some things and position ourselves correctly. 
Now, EVs wise, we live a Darm U turn from Folk. We live a non Sheer Force play rough from Copper Raja after Rocks. We have enough speed for Zoroark and Manetric. Uh, and then we have the rest in the special attack just to do as much damage as humanly possible. Because if it isn't winning, it's at least breaking this matchup. And lastly, we have our Crocodile rocking out with the uh, Focus Sash Intimidate as its ability, knock off Stealth Rock, Earthquake, and Counter. Max attack, 12 for death and 244 speed with a jolly nature. EVs wise, we got max speed. I mean, enough speed for Rose Raid. We have max attack and we threw the rest in super death. The reason it's not an HP or defense is because I want those Pokemon to bring me down pretty low. I don't need to take hits from them anyways. And um, I want to counter. If I don't see Rabombi, if I don't see Rabombi at all, I'm most likely going to leave Crook. Reason being, if I don't see Rabombi, I really do expect a potential Darm lead or potential Vish lead. And if I can put counter on those Pokemon attacking me, I get to claim a KO, which is awesome. Genuinely amazing. If I can trade one for that and just pick up a KO right off the bat, trade this thing for a little bit later and still maybe get a rocks. Amazing. Even if I don't get a rocks and I'm able to trade uh, crocodile countering to knock something out for um, no rocks again, it's something I will honestly take. I think this is a really solid lead. Um, it's really hard to switch into crook for my opponent as well their only resist to my dual steps is something like rabombi which again if i can get chip on that's great and again i half of me just doesn't expect rabombi to come when i have cinderace plus celesteela it could but i really don't expect it to and other than that our dual steps go pretty unresisted the only thing that really pivoted to us outside of rabombi is going to be something like hit on top which i will definitely definitely take some damage on uh for things like my celly to put in range of that but yeah that is pretty much just going to be the team. Uh, let's jump right into the battle. All right, guys, here we are with the battle. Let's see what Magnitude ended up bringing to this game. So we do see the B. We don't see Rose Raid, which is actually pretty sick. I'll take that. Um, I'm glad I kept Court Chains on Cinder. I didn't think that that thing would actually come. Draco, Draco Vish. Uh, there's no rocks on my opponent's team as well. Um, the only removal would be him on top. Darm, Audino hit on top, B, and Zoro. Now, I think for sure my best lead is going to be Cinderace. I'm faster than literally everything I U-turn on literally anything. Um, my endgame Pyro Ball is very clean uh, on that Dracovish potentially. So, uh, we just, I mean, we need to chip that Dracovish. So, yeah, we should be, uh, we should be chilling. Again, we, have, we don't have to worry about anything when it comes to our cinders. Just click in U-turn, and we'll be able to gauge some pretty good damage on whatever it wants to lead off. And be in a pretty good spot. If it's a hit on top lead, that's fine. We U-turn, we go right into the and we click Leech Seed. It's a Rabombi lead. That's fine with me. Because I'm going to U-turn. If he likes to stay in... That's fine. I can go back into my Cinderace and I can actually court change those webs. Uh, so I'm going to U-turn. He's going to withdraw. Very nice. Out into the Hitmon top. Intimidate's going to pop. Hitmon top from a U-turn is going to take about 7-80%. And minus one. That tells me he's pretty physically bulky. Not ridiculously physically bulky, but pretty physically bulky. Um, and honest to God, I think I want to go Latios. Yeah. I think I'm going to go Latios. I'm going to click Calm Mind first. Yeah, I'm going to click on in. We'll use this to break through his team, hopefully. Uh, we see that he is not leftovers. He could be a salt vest. And we'll see exactly what he wants to pivot out into. If you do get that fat, fat you turn off. We are going to call mind. If he stays in and triple axles me, that's fine. I'm surprised he was willing to let me have damage on that. I feel like this is a very important pivot. Triple Axel. Very fog. Our weakness policy is going to pop. Miss. Miss. 
we're gonna chew that, which is dope. Um, and I would love to see this damage to an assault vest hip on top. We do not kill, but we do a ridiculous amount of damage. Um, I'm just gonna drag him both though. He doesn't have a good pivot into this. If he wants to pivot into Zoroark, expecting a psychic move. Great. I don't think you go B though. I don't think you go B. I could agility expecting a pivot out, but I think I use this to break through. And I just click plus through Dragon Balls. Um, if he's not... Yeah, if he's not, uh, what do you call it? Assault Vest? He does die to this hit. From max HP. So we are going to be able to Dragon Pulse. Is this going to be enough to knock him out? No, because he is for sure Assault Vest. For Black Soul, he's going to hit. Miss the second one. On four. That's fine, though. We're going to go down right there. Completely fine with me. Um, and I think I can honestly just go out into a big Kruko delay. And just click Earthquake. <laughs> we know he's Assault Vest. And there's no way, no way he, uh, loses his hit. So, is there any Earthquake pivot? There is not. I'm just going to click Earthquake. I mean, I guess, I guess that there is a, uh, Rabombi. That's it, though. And that still takes a fat chunk. And I have a free Cinderace pivot. Um, so yeah, he is going to give that to me. And this is great positioning if he goes out and do his Vish or his Darm. Because I'm staying in and I'm clicking counter. Great positioning if this is Vish or Darm. Phenomenal spot for us. Because we will be able to claim another KO. And that means no spin, so if he decides to get up his webs, we can Quartz Angels back and they'll be up for good on the rest of, uh, for the rest of the game on his side. So that's great. I will stay in Encounter though, if he goes into either one of those wall breakers. But Bombi, not what I wanted to see, but it's okay. <laughs> um, I am going to go out into Cinderace. Do I have Heal Ball on my Lantern? I don't. On Fort. Uh, but it's all good. We are going to pivot Skinder. In case he does elect to get up webs, I want to court change those back immediately. But Jeru, are you Scarf? Sticky Barb. He steals our Scarf. That's annoying. Um, That's super annoying. But at the very least... We can throw off a pretty free U-turn here. We know he's Scarf. He's going to U-turn. That's fine. As we'll get a little bit of momentum. Uh, that's a very cool bring. That's a very cool bring. So we are going to U-turn. Um, his only switch would be, like, what, Vish? I think that's it. I don't think he has much else that wants to take us on. So, we're going to U-turn. Vish comes out. Yep, yep, yep. Vish, you're going to get a clean, 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 clean U-turn off. Why play his Lantern? Lantern. Okay, Draco, Vish. He is for sure sub. Which can be a little bit annoying. Now, do I think you stay in, though? In my mind, the answer is no. I'm going to Toxic, because I know he doesn't 2-hit KO me. So, worst comes to worst, yeah. So, if he subs here, we're very fast. So, if he was, uh, you know, pretty aggressively creeping, that's fine. I mean, I, I honestly, I forget exactly what we're creeping on this. So, if he subs here, best case scenario, perfect. Um... Great. So, now he's just behind a sub, and he's poisoned. I'm going to protect. He also does not have a lot to break through Selly. I'm noticing. So we're going to protect here. As he's going to elect a Super Fang. And 
And he's going to take a lot of chip. Um, as he's just kind of stuck behind a sub right now. And that's, uh, that's phenomenal for me. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to Volt. I'm going to go into Croak. I am Sash, so I'll be able to live anyone hit. And I want to get up rocks. But he doesn't have a way of removing them. So we're going to Volt. Now, I am giving up my Sash, but I think this is better than giving up damage on my, um, on my Selly, which does ridiculously well in this endgame. So, that's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna go Crook. Tiffany's not gonna work because he's behind a sub as he clicks Super Fang. And he's gonna hit. I thought he missed for a minute. Else. Yes. Um, so that's fine. Uh, we actually don't break his sub there, which is a little annoying. This is fine, though. This is still completely fine with me. Because I am going to elect to get up my rocks again. Because he's in range of Toxic, so I'm going to get up my rocks. I think that's for sure my best play. So, let's go ahead and do that. Go ahead and do that. We're going to get up our rocks, because uh, he'll be able to knock us out regardless with a rend move. Super Fang. Okay. You thought I was going to pivot into Lantern. Now, part of me just wants to... Part of me wants to pivot out this turn. Yeah, I'm going to pivot out this turn. I might as well keep this as a sack. Um, if you rend this time, great. Um, I think you actually have to to knock me out, which is interesting. Um, if he EQs, that's again fine. He's minus one. He's not doing a lot of damage to my lantern. If he, uh, super fangs, good play. That's fine again. Not too worried. Honestly, not too worried. So we're gonna switch. We're gonna go out into lantern. Liquidation. I didn't even know Vish got Liquidation. Is there a reason for Liquidation? He's in range of rock, so I'm just gonna protect. And uh, that's what this was here for. Let's to, uh, check this thing. So, that's fine. That's genuinely fine with me. 150% okay. So I am gonna protect. Um, he's gonna withdraw, so that's a sack for later. He's gonna B. And that's fine. I'm just gonna Volt Switch. You're Scarfed. So, I'm gonna Volt Switch. You can U-turn if you'd like. This is fine with me. I wanna make sure I Volt Switch on the off case that you elected trick again, expecting my Selly. Energy ball, that's fine. Jesus, that did a lot of damage. Um, so we're gonna Volt. Again, very nice, very nice. And from here, I believe I just go right back out into Sin Race. Yeah. Um, there are no more switch-ins to Pyro Ball. I hope I don't take Sticky Barb Chip this turn. That would be annoying. We are on Fort. Um, so that's okay. I am just going to Pyro Ball, though. He's going to withdraw. Probably sack the Vish. If I had to guess. Uh, I guess correctly. Down goes to rocks. So that's going to be a kill for Crook. Awesome, awesome. Very nice stuff. As, uh, unfortunately, that's not lefties. <laughs> Sticky Barb is going to continue to pop. And uh, we're going to have to play around this thing, correct? Now, if he goes into Darm, 
I think I have to stay in. And Pyro Ball. I think I have to stay in. We'll also be able to tell Rock's damage if this is Zorark. This is, in fact, Darn. Now, I am going to Pyro Ball. Because if this thing is sub Belly Drum, I can lose the game right here and now. And I think it's in my best interest to just Pyro Ball. As good as Crook is, I mean, as good as um, Cinderace is, I don't think I need it to win the game. He is going to Icicle Crash. Maybe we'll live this even. I don't know. He's Scarf, so we'll potentially live. I'd love to not get frozen, I mean, flinched. We're going to use Pyro Ball, and we're going to hit. There's going to be Cinderace taking out the Darm. Two biggest threats to our team. Gone. Awesome. Great. Down it goes. Um, we should die to uh, uh, Sticky Barb. We are not. Awesome. Great, great, great. Great to see. Great to see. And, um, yeah. Awesome. Genuinely great. Um, our throw is looking great for the endgame. If we can just get rid of that damn Robombi. I hope he goes into that now. He does not. I'm going to high jump kick. The reason I'm going to high jump kick is because if he protects, whatever. I die to Sticky Barb anyways. And if he doesn't... I get a ton of damage off. So I'm gonna high jump kick. I'm gonna protect, that's fine. Um, like it, it didn't matter to me at all, just because again, I, I die anyways. And his Rabombi has one more switch in. So I think our end game with throw is very much so possible. Um, in fact, now nah, I'm just gonna circle throw. No reason not to. In case he goes B, like if he goes hard B, expecting me to set up, I'm going. To, I'm, I'm just clicking circle throw because it'll put him in range to where he dies to rocks, and then I think uh, throw can actually just win the game. I need to keep it for this Audino though, because I can't just kind of lose to Audino. I need to keep it for this Audino though. Hopefully, 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 we can seal this endgame. With rocks up, this is amazing. He's gonna wish. Now, I need to hope he does not get thrown right into the Rabombi. That would be worst case scenario. Oh, it's gonna be Zoro. That's great. Um, that's Zoro. So I'm just gonna circle throw again. I live anyone hit from this thing, guaranteed. And I need to make sure that Rabombi doesn't come in for the wish. And if it does, I need to make sure that Zork is at least gone. Because uh, realistically, it's also the only thing that breaks through Selly at this point. Realistically, so. He's gonna withdraw. Probably out into his own B. I need to hit. I need to hit this circle throw. I need to hit this circle throw. Please, 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 please hit this circle throw. Throw you have one job. Let's go. That is amazing. I think that might be the game. I think we might just win. Um, if he gets out into Audino, I'm just going to bulk up. Here. We're just going to bulk up. So I think that might be the throw sweep. So it's going to get its own wish back. That's uh, honestly best case scenario out of all the Pokemon I wanted to get um, circle thrown out into. Like one of these team to get circle thrown into. Uh, that's best case scenario. So again, his Rabombi dies to rocks. Uh, we're sleep talk, my friend. We get one circle throw off. And we need to keep track of sleep turns as well. Maybe I should have bulked up on a protect. No, he's gonna withdraw. Under Zorark? Nah, I mean. Or just sack the Rabombi. That's fine too. Uh, great. I should have, uh, I guess I should have bulked up because it was pretty no drawback, but that's all good. So we're gonna get put to sleep. And I'm pretty sure that's fine. This could be scary. <laughs> this could really honestly be very scary. If we get bad sleep talk rolls. But that's the name of the game. This is our first sleep turn. Nasty plot. Fuck, 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 fuck. I need to wake up. I need to wake up. I need to wake up. I need you to wake up. I mean, I need you to hit circle throw. I need you to get a circle throw. 
need you to get a circle throw. Come on. Fuck. Fuck, 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 fuck. Okay. We might lose because of that. I'll be honest. We might lose. We're pretty spadef. I need to not wake up and get the circle throw. I need to not wake up and get the circle throw. Focus blast, miss. Great. Blunder policy. Not great. I mean, I guess I didn't have anything out spent anyways. Come on. Come on. Come on. Fuck. Come on, throw. You're throwing for me, buddy. You're throwing for me. Okay. So we know it's blunder policy. I still think my best play is circle throwing. I need to wake up. That's two turns of sleep. Three turns max, I believe, unless I'm just not understanding sleep correctly. Focus Blast. He's gonna hit this one. I need to... <laughs> oh my gosh! Hit! 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 Let's go throw! Oh my gosh, it's my boy! Oh! Throw clutching the game! Holy shit, dude. Oh my god, that was great! Oh my god. That was terrifying. If he had flamethrower, I think we might have just lost the game. <laughs> I'll be honest. Um, I'm gonna rest here. Uh, as annoying as it is, I think this is my best way of winning. Like, guaranteed. So, uh, we're gonna rest. Uh, just because I think his best way of hitting me is yawn. He should wish, yawn, maybe toxic, knock off, something like that. And there's no way- yeah. So he could be wish, uh, wish tech knockoff, uh, wish tech knockoff yawn. Make a lot of sense. Um, I'm just gonna sleep talk. Oh, goodness gracious. Holy shit, dude. Throw clutching up. The one matchup I found throw, you know, somewhat viable this game, uh, and he clutches. He, he does phenomenally. Uh, that's what you gotta do in the Rejects Battle Royale in the NFEBR. Uh, you gotta bring your, you know, your lower tier slept on mons and uh, hopefully use them to success. And we were able to do that with Throw this week. And I'm pretty sure we should be able to win this endgame. I'm pretty sure we should be able to win this endgame. We're gonna sleep talk. It might take a little bit just because we are relying on sleep talk. And uh, he just doesn't want to get the correct sleep talk rolls. Um, but it's all good. It's all good. We're gonna get knocked. That does literally two. We're gonna sleep talk one more time and then we'll be able to um, circle throw. So, and again, I'm not trying to BM Steve. He's a really, really nice guy from the few times I've talked to him. Um, I just felt like just in case he did have special coverage for some reason uh, and I missed my circle throw or something like that, I felt that rest was my best play in order to like, you know, absolutely ensure that I got the best differential possible. Um, so again, I know that's not very fun, but I felt like it was my best play. Throw is just setting up out the wazoo right now um i am really trying this next turn obviously i'm clicking circle throw um again i hope he doesn't think that this is bm and me just being a punk um i, I was just trying to put myself in just just in case i want to get myself the best differential possible especially if we got our especially after we got our asses kicked last week uh so i felt like that was very very important um uh, he's gonna knock we're gonna wake up we're gonna circle throw we're gonna clean oko that odd dino ggs to uh magnitude uh, very, very good game. That was terrifying with the Zoroark. That was definitely a really, really cool set. Um, but we were able to kind of position throw, get those rocks up, chip down his only fighting resist on that team that he brought, being the, uh, the Rabombi, which is really the only thing that could break through us on our team, on his team, once we got, um, you know, set up and all that stuff, and, uh, really go to town after that. But, uh, again, GG Steve, thank you so much for watching, guys. I really do appreciate it. If you're new here, be sure to drop a sub. We're pushing towards 500. Uh, that's our next goal. We recently hit 400, which was our main goal for the year, so thank you guys for that. Uh, drop a like if you enjoyed, and I will see you guys in the next one. Later.